Let's talk Syracuse and Boston College. You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're doing a special crossover episode. We've been doing these all year with uh, Locked On shows that have crossovers that we can do. And to join us today, we have Jackson Holzer of Locked On Syracuse to talk about t- this Saturday's game. Jackson, how's it going? It's going well, AJ. How are you? Hanging in there. It's been a rough month for Boston College as they went. I'm going to ask you about that. I mean, it was a hot start for you guys. And then what happened? All right. We'll get into me later. Well, I'm going to start with you, though, because sure. six and two. Fran Brown, talk to me about this coach, because this is a guy, you know, BC, we are get just coming off our own defensive uh, defensive backs coach who was getting his first gig and Jeff Halfley didn't work out. Fran Brown seems to have it clicking. What is it about him that's get this program going? I think he just gets it. That's the best way to put it. He's very good with the media. He understands what to say. He understands what we want to hear. But more importantly, right now, this season, he's delivering on that. See, when he arrived at Syracuse, he said he is going to help recruiting because that was one of Syracuse's biggest issues. They could make a bowl game here or there. They couldn't capitalize it. They couldn't recruit well. So you bring in a guy in Fran Brown, who was the number one recruiter in the nation, albeit from Georgia, but still he comes in and immediately it's it's different. Like they would not have gotten a guy like Kyle McCord in the transfer portal if they had Dino Babers and or if they hired literally anyone else. Anyone else. They, they would not have gotten a guy like Kyle McCord in the transfer portal or for Dale Diggs or even kept a guy like Aronde Gaston from entering the transfer portal. So Fran Brown delivered on that front very quickly. He did well in the transfer portal, did well with high school recruiting very quickly. Then it was like, okay, he's never been a head coach before. He's got to be able to win games, right? You got to put your money where your mouth is. You're starting to get a little bit more talent in the program, win. And so far this season, there's been some ups. There's been some downs during games. But you look at the overall totality of it, they're 6-2. and two. They're in a bowl game for the third straight season. They haven't done that in the 21st century. All right. So overall, I think the vibes are pretty good. I think overall, most people in the fan base would say that Fran Brown has done an excellent first job. And guess what? Season's not over just yet. You know, BC and Syracuse, they're both with first year head coaches and someone, both of us being in the media. It's so interesting to see the differences in terms of just listening to the guys talk. Right. So you get you get Bill O'Brien, who comes from the Bill Belichick tree, Nick Saban tree. I mean. I can I I try to pull and pull and pull to get anything out of him, kick in him anything. And no, I, and this week I was like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to something Fran Brown has to say. And and I heard his conversation about, you know, if you guys don't want to play, I'm gonna throw the freshman out there. Um, I I was digging listening to him talk. I was like, this is interesting. Like e- it, even if it didn't work out, I was like, this guy has got a personality to him. I could see why he connects with players. Um, I don't want to say there's a little Dion in him, but it seems like he's got, a, he keeps Dion, it. Dion has a little bit more personality to him, but they're both very, typically very good with the media. I mean, Dion sometimes yeah. will go over the line, which Fran Brown to this point has not. I wouldn't say that Fran at any point has gone over the line yet, but they are kind of similar where they get it. Yeah, they, they just, they understand it. And look, you can make a pretty nice living like, being like Bill Belichick and not always giving or tipping your hand or anything. But at the same time, it is nice and refreshing to have a guy like Fran Brown. And he's just going to tell you like it is. Yep. He tells you like it is when he says like, okay, I'll just play the freshman. Like he means it. He means it because last week, right. We're down 21, three in the third quarter to Virginia tech. They have a backup backup quarterback, backup running back. You're down 21, three in the third quarter. This is coming off a really bad four quarters against Pitt on the road, a chance where Syracuse could have established themselves as a contender if you had won that game and you get annihilated. So I understand where he's coming from. He's like, all right, you don't want to play again? Okay, we'll go with the freshman. It it was enough. It it woke him up clearly. Yeah, definitely. You you know, that was an exciting come from behind win against the Hokies. and a, a big win for Syracuse. Now, Kyle McCord, that was a big turnaround game for him after, I mean, he was meme-worthy the week before with six interceptions, and that was just, 
it was tough. <laughs> it was tough to watch. I mean, if you're a Syracuse fan, I'm sure to see what he what happened there. But I mean, everything else, you have to say that this has been a gigantic success to bring him here. And what does he? What does he? You know, what makes him so dangerous? And what has he brought to this offense? I think the best way to put it is he's a pro in college. I'm not saying he's Tom Brady. I'm not saying he's Peyton Manning. I'm not saying he's Cam Ward for that matter. Like he's not going to be a first round pick. Best way to describe it though, he's a pro in college. And I think he could have a nice NFL career where he maybe plays five, 10 years and maybe he gets a chance to start one way or another, or maybe he's a backup quarterback somewhere for making a nice living. Also being a backup quarterback in the NFL, Mm -hmm. but that's the best way to put it with Kyle McCord. He's, very quick with his decisions, which at times can obviously bite him. Not the most mobile guy in the world. He will take some chances, hence why he's got a lot of interceptions. Uh, but he gets rid of the ball on time, and he's very good at moving within the pocket. Within the pocket, right? If you're not going right. to be the most mobile guy, you got to have good pocket awareness. You got to get rid of the ball on time, and you got to be able to move in the pocket, know how to avoid a rush here or there. That is what makes Kyle McCord special. And that game against Pitt, that's an aberration. I mean, there were a lot of people that were taking victory laps on him saying like, I knew that was the Kyle McCord. You know, that's the Kyle McCord from Ohio state that everyone wanted that everyone thought he was no good. Right. That's him. That's the real him. I don't think he's ever had a game like that in his life. I mean, he's a five-star recruit in high school. He was throwing to Marvin Harrison in high school. He yeah. didn't have five interceptions in any game at Ohio state. I mean, I look back, I checked. I mean, he didn't, that was the worst game of his life. And he rebounded, had a solid game against against Virginia Tech. Didn't throw for 300 yards for the first time all season, but who cares? They got the win. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you get a guy that can move your move the ball. He's got four receivers with 35 receptions or more. You've got some good weapons out there, and then you've got Lakeen Allen, who's you know, right, Bill O'Brien said today was one of the best rece- uh, running backs in the ACC. You know, this offense. It reminds me almost like some of the earlier days when you had, um, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, be- beginning of Dino Babers. Um, God, I'm Dungy? Yeah. T- yeah. Eric Dungy. Thank yeah. you. He smoked BC. Like, I, like totally different style, but like Completely you're getting, different. yeah. Right. But you're getting a lot of points. And it's, it's like that kind of efficient, like, like offense that could get, can, can score quick. And I think that's going to be a big challenge for Boston College. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, Tell me a little bit about the defense, because I don't, you know, I think a lot of folks, you know, for me, I know about Elijah Robinson, you know, being your new defensive coordinator. I think he's a, you know, a stud in the making. What What is this defense looking like? What is what's going on with the orange there? Defense is definitely the uh, the weaker link of the two. I think when I mean, you laid it out nicely. I mean, yeah, Syracuse has been mostly an offensive team or an air raid offense. Except last week, you got got to adjust your personnel. That's on coaching because Virginia Tech can't really stop the run. So they ran the ball down their throat the entire game, even when they were losing. Defense is the weak link, though. They can be had. Do they generate a huge pass rush? They do not. Do they have the most excellent corners in the world? Nope. And they also struggle with tackling at times. I mean, we've seen plays over the course of this season. It's a five-yard in route. Guy breaks three or four tackles, it, it it turns into a 70 yard game. It can be had. That's for sure. The 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 key with the defense is can you hold your opponent to like 24? If you can hold them to like 24, you're in good shape. All right. So that's that we're doing a quick little uh overview of each of our teams in a moment. I'm going to let Jackson talk to me about BC and I already know where he's going with this because we're going to talk about the month of November, uh, month of October that we wish never happened. We'll get into all that in just a moment. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial fl- favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5 APY on uninvested cash and can be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement bonus on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privilege of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold LLC.
Get ready to tackle the NFL with the FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I, I've, I've been talking about FanDuel for, for years now because I love it. It's the best for using, uh, for making my NFL wagers. I've been fading on the Patriots all season. I, whatever the whatever the wager is, going against it. Uh, that's but, a good bet, except when they're playing the Jets. Except, yeah. And I, I'm waiting for Drake May to kind of snap out of it um, and, and, to, and like have an explosive game and it's going to bite me for it. But I've been doing pretty well by doing my fading on them all season. You can do that too with, with FanDuel. And you know what the best part is? Some, we're busy people. Sometimes you, you don't get your wager in before the start of the game. You can get in anytime. Watch the game figure it out. Like maybe it's the middle of the first quarter. They have any time bets. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you could check out the latest stats, view live play by play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. So you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Locked on Boston College, Locked on Syracuse crossover episode here. And we are discussing uh, this upcoming game on Saturday. It's a noon game. Uh, I was just I just tweeted out it's about 50 degrees. They're going to say about for game time. But I saw the the uh, temperature and it's going to dip. And if you know Alumni Stadium late in the season, it gets cold quick. <laughs> so it could get a little colder for this game. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for more action for some of the other games, check out Locked on ACC. It's on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. It's a great, uh, some great hosts over there with Alex Dono and uh, Kenton Gibbs. They do a great job. Check that out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Now, I'm going to take a backseat here and let Jackson interview me about Boston College. So, Jackson, you're up. All right, AJ. I think the best way to start this is what happened? What happened to Boston College? You start the year four and one. It was looking really good. I mean, it was a it was a it was a very good four and one, I would say. And the yep. one loss was on the road at Missouri, who was, I think, the fifth ranked team in the country at that point. And it was a close loss, too. It was a one possession game. I thought Boston College at one point might win the game. Yep. So what led to Boston College's hot start? And then what happened? Why did why all of a sudden a three game losing streak? <laughs> So, all right, we'll start off with the way this season. It's been a roller coaster, right? So you start the season off, and I know Florida State is 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 hot garbage right now, but they were number 10 when you faced them. I know they lost to Georgia Tech, but because of that weird week zero not ranking thing, uh, BC got them at top 10 in, in Florida State. And they basically just ran the ball down their throat, ran for like 270 yards. They were dominating that game um, and go on to win. They, they crushed Duquesne. Duquesne's Duquesne. Uh, then they go to Missouri, as you said, they were winning. They were up like 14, nothing at one point. Um, but they just didn't have the, the weapons to, to do it. And Thomas Castellanos made like, I think two interceptions that ended up crushing him, uh, against Michigan state. They come back and win that game. They storm the field. That was fun. Uh, red bandana game. They then go against Western Kentucky. Thomas Castellanos is hurt. He doesn't play. So they have started at Grayson James and he, um, he's not good. <laughs> he went like seven of 16 and i know that feeling right like, now not good <laughs> a lot of right there's a few writers that i i see at a lot of these practices and they're like yeah Grace and james should be like All right. you know uh the offensive line's not good enough for him to put too much and he's not accurate so they they donovan Azaraku won them that game then things start falling apart so thomas castellanos comes back he fought he had three or four in um turnovers against UVA. Uh, one of them where he got the ball swiped out of his hands right into Jonas Sanker's hands, and he ran it in for a touchdown that basically sealed that loss. They go to Virginia Tech. They come out looking like absolute garbage to start the se- the game. They're down 28 nothing. They come back. They almost tie it in the third quarter. They're down 28-21. Um, it was a fourth and one. They got stuffed, and it just fell apart from there. They just didn't have the guns to do it. And then against Louisville, um, Am I missing a lot? No, no, then it's Louisville, right? So Louisville, they play, they're up uh, 20 nothing, 20 nothing at, uh, at one point in the second quarter, they're making turnovers, they're getting plays. <clears throat> and then they're, I mean, it was a lot of gadget kind of stuff. So they, they like, they were making turnovers and, and getting short field. And then uh, Louisville figured it out. <laughs> and BC's offense yep. just, and, 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 and the overarching theme of all this is BC's punting is, one of the most offensive things I've ever seen in my life. Like punting. against Lu- punting, their punting is awful. So you guys uh, also have a bad special teams. Oh, no, this so, is going to be fun. So, yeah. So there was uh, the Virginia game, Virginia tech game. 
you know, we're looking for turnovers. Like I think Thomas Castellanos put the ball on the ground three times against Virginia Tech after fumbling and throwing interceptions against Virginia. So we're, you know, you're watching the Louisville game. He makes no turnovers. Great, right? But the punts were basically turnovers. Like they had a 22 yard punt from like the 20 yard line against Louisville. That's a touchdown. They had like a 30 yard punt. And the worst part of all this is they've cycled in three or four guys and none of them can punt. None of them can consistently punt. Does and Boston College have a have a soccer team by chance? We've been saying there needs to be an open practice, uh, open audition. We did listen, a, listen. We did a I, I've at been one campaigning point. for many, many years that yep. I think a solution to punting is take a goalie from soccer. Have you yep. ever seen how far they can punt a soccer ball? It's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah, you tell I me mean, they can't punt a football. Just give them a little bit of training; they can do it. They need a sports psychologist for this team because I've gone to enough practices to watch them, and I'm like. He's booming it. He's booming it. And then I, I'm sitting up at the press box. It's off the side of his foot. It's you know he's he's shanking it. It's like, what is going on? So the that is a yips. Yeah, it it seriously cost them the game against that, and their offense was horrible. Um, it cost them a game against Louisville. So it's just been as Bill says, they have not been able to put together 60 minutes of football, and it's like inconsistencies here and there, and it's cost them four games. So that's kind of the, the long end of the shorter there. The thing is, though, with Boston College is even though they are four and four, it's not a game that Syracuse should take lightly. First of all, you're on the road. And second of all, I I look at all the games and for the most part, aside from Virginia Tech, the games are close. Yeah, the games are close with Boston College. Like they it really aside from Duquesne and honestly doesn't even really matter the opponent. It's kind of just close regardless. Um, you mentioned some of the shortcomings of Tanis Tassolanos, but he was someone who I was not high on at the beginning of the season. I didn't think he was very good at all. I was like, he can run. I know he's got 1,100 rushing yards. That's cool, but he can't throw. He's got 15 touchdowns, 14 interceptions last year. This year, 17 touchdowns, four interceptions. So a much, much better ratio here. How has he been able to progress as a passer this season? I mean, he's, it's, it's good. He's not great. Um, he has his moments. I think the big thing with him is, is consistency. And, you know, there's times like when you watch the Louisville game where he'll find like a guy wide open and nail it. Um, and ha- having him work with Bill O'Brien has been a huge deal, right? Bill's worked with Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, Bryce Young, like he's, you know, you name it. He's, he's had that, that experience and they've, you know, he's worked with him specifically to make him more of a pocket passer. Now the, the, the bad side of that, is I feel like just like I said with the yips with the punter, it's also gotten his head too. Like if you look at his rushing yards, yeah, he's they're not low. he's not the same passer runner anymore because he's learning how to be a pack pocket quarterback. But I kind of hate it because it takes the one thing away from him that makes him special. He's a five nine quarterback. I don't need to sit t- see Thomas Castellanos sitting in a cor- in a pocket trying to read defenses. I want to see Thomas Castellanos. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to make sure he doesn't throw a ton of interceptions like he did last year. But I'd rather see him make a quick read, and if it's not there, run. And he's not doing that. He's sitting there reading and making two or three reads. The offensive line's not all that good. So then he's getting chased, and he doesn't – I don't know if he's hurt or whatever, but he's not the same guy as last year. So he's not able to run the ball as effectively. And that that piece, personally, like – I. You know, the offense was what it was last year, but it had an identity and could do things a a lot, right? Like, they were a power-running team. They were, like, 10th in the country at one point. They couldn't pass the ball to save their lives, but they could run it, and that was what they were going for. They can't do that right now, and that's a big issue. Uh, You know, I Bill, again, like, this week was just saying at press conference, they got to pass the ball better. I'm like, please stop having him, like... The what you know, he's not making good reads. He's he's missing guys that are wide open um, and doesn't see him. And then he, you got wide receivers who on paper look OK, but they're also struggling to get open, too. So it's been a kind of a I feel like that has been one of the biggest issues. The defense has been fine, like they're they're limited in some ways. But the offense has just not been consistent enough. And there's times where this offense just looks bad, it just looks bad. I, I get it. I mean, I think the next step with Castellanos, it's put it all together. Right. right. We've, we, we've seen he can run. This year, he has improved. His numbers look better. Yep. Put it together. Next season. I, I that That's what he's got to do. Maybe it's know. this game. Hopefully not. Hopefully he wakes up after 
Syracuse team. That would yep. be nice. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have that. <laughs> I, I like, would yeah. say, you know, what's going to be interesting is, and, and this is just me spitballing. I've said this on my show a bunch of times. So the coaches, if they're listening, they, I've said this before, you know, Castellanos is a Jeff Halfley guy. I get the sense based off of the recruiting and the quarterbacks are going for the bills. Not all that thrilled with mobile quarterbacks. Like he likes guys that can move a little. That's, that's and, I mean, when you he know? was with Watson, I mean, Watson, yeah. Watson was a mobile guy. Right. That's, that's a different type of mobile, like a guy that can move in the pocket and can run a little bit, but like, he's not like Castellanos who's like, no, I mean, he, he's not going to run. For, I mean, Deshaun was never a guy who was going to run for a thousand. He wasn't Lamar Jackson, but he was one of the more mobile quarterbacks in the league when he was in Houston. I mean, that's kind of surprising to me how he wouldn't like a guy like Castellanos. I, he says he maybe likes, he's so no, used to a guy like Watson and like Watson, who was an NFL guy and was once really good. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I, I think he's. He, uh, yeah, I think he's more interested in the passing mechanics than the running mechanics, right? Like he wants a guy that can throw it, and maybe if Castellanos isn't able to do it the way he wants him to, I'm just curious if this is going to be our quarterback next year. Just you know, whether it's you know any a variety of decisions there. Just a thought I've had. Uh, Castle, I mean, Bill says all, over and over again that he loves him. I know he's wicked, very well respected within the school. I just, I'm just curious. It's just something I think about sometimes. That's a fair, it's fair to wonder. I mean, in this day and age with the transfer portal, you never quite yeah. know. And hey, you know what? Just spitballing here since we're spitballing right now. Uh, Kyle McCord's a, it, it doesn't have any more years of eligibility after right. this. So Syracuse is going to be in the quarterback market potentially. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not naming names, but since you're, I, okay. I mean, Auburn and Ole Miss reached out to him last year. So I know they were trying to get him to transfer and he wouldn't do it. So you never know. And then you think about like, there's plenty of really good quarterbacks that may fit what B- Bill's trying to do more that would like to work with Bill O'Brien. You know what I mean? Like there's guys out there. I'm like, look at like USC right now. And I don't know how good he is anymore, but like Miller Moss is getting benched. Yep. Would, would he like to get his, you know, feet wet working with Bill? You never know. Like something like that could happen and just surprise you. And there's something I've been thinking of. Well, you never quite know. Uh, overall, what would you say are BC's biggest strengths and uh, biggest weaknesses? So their ability to run the ball has been probably their biggest strength, I think. Like, not just Castellanos. Like, their power running the ball. Um, when they do it, I think it's been good. Now, their their offensive coordinator is Will Long. He was the def- tight ends coach for the Patriots with Bill. Um, it's his first year calling plays. I'm not the biggest fan of some of the ways that he's constructing these offenses. But when he gets things going, they can be good. They got this guy, Turbo Richard. He missed last week. I love his name. He's a running back, true freshman. Um, probably their most talented running back. Like you guys saw Kai Roba show last year, who was big physical dude. This guy's got more explosiveness to him. Um, and it's just starting to get like, he's just getting his feet wet. So I'm not sure if he's going to play or not. Um, didn't sound like it when Bill was talking on a podcast today. Um, but we, you never know. Uh, that's a big strength and takeaways. They're big. Uh, their defense is uh, their ball Hawks. Like they're, they're going to make mistakes. Um, they're, they're very much into bend. Don't break. So you're not going to get a ton of huge plays against this defense. You can march down the field all the time on them, but they also will get, you know, they had like, uh, was th- I think three or four turnovers against Louisville. So they've been doing a lot of that. Now they get to stop turning the ball on the other side. So that's the other, that's the weakness, right? They, they, as equally as they give, they take the ball away. They give it away. Now they didn't do that against Louisville, but I said the punts were basically turnovers. And then the other big issue, and why Brent, Brent mentioned Allen, is their run defense has been inconsistent since probably midway through the Virginia game. And we saw pieces of it against Missouri too, where they just, you know, there's been some big plays like Bashal Tootin for Virginia Tech just murdered yeah. DC. Like we were lucky good. we didn't have to face Tootin last week. Yeah. So he had like 285 yards and like four touchdowns against BC. Like he just, he just basically took them out. So that, that's, that's something. And then punting, 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 punting. Yeah. That's the big issue. So listen, if they need someone to punt 20 yards off the side of the foot, call me. I can do that. I was just kicking a football in my backyard going, can I do that? And I can't do that, but I tried. (laughs) You know, one of my prouder moments, it's sad to say, but this is one of my prouder moments of, of athletics. I mean, I wasn't a football player growing up. So, uh, I went to the college football hall of fame last April and they have a field goal set up. I know it's field goal, not punting, but they have a field goal set up. Yep. It's about 20 yards. They give you like a, a try on it. Like you can try to kick a field goal. I made it first try. 
Wow. Barely, <laughs> barely squeaked it in. I'm talking like barely. It was like short right, but I like just snuck it in there. And I was like, that's the pinnacle of my football career. I was going to say, uh, like most of those like halftime or like uh, inter- like commercial games that they have sometimes where a kid, they bring on random people to kick field goals. You got to add like another five yards. Cause I think they're usually like 25 yards. So you probably, if you just missed hit it on 20, probably a little short, but if, maybe if you do some practicing, you can win on one of those things. Right. Uh, <laughs> like the pressure of in. thousands of people watching you might be hard. Listen, there, I would play hockey in front of thousands of people and be okay. Uh, <laughs> Boston College is looking for some hockey players, but uh, no, I do no. not want to kick a football in front of thousands of people. I don't think it would go very well. No, no, All right, I, I, I don't figured think it I'd... would. All right. In a moment, we'll chat. I want to. We're going to do both. Give our predictions. So Jackson and I will talk about what we think is going to happen in this game. Give our predictions and a whole lot more. We'll finish off our show in just a moment. Guys, you ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom? It's time that you stop worrying about your performance and get him, so you can feel confident knowing that you get hard and stay hard wherever you're in the mood. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. Hims provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis in their generics for up to 95% cheaper. And no insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. With hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hims.com slash locked on. That's hims.com slash locked on to get your personalized ED treatment options. Hims.com slash locked on. The products mentioned here are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Locked on Boston College and Locked on Syracuse crossover episode. This is fun. We've been having a good time talking about this Big East rivalry. Uh, I think this is game 50. There we go. You got to bring up the Big East. 57, I think. Uh, Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm old enough to be... I, I. the worst game I've ever, no, I'm not going to say it's the worst. B- with BC and Wake Forest, 3 nothing was the worst game I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the second worst game was Diamond Ferry. Uh, I, when BC, it, this is moons, many moons ago, when a young Matt Ryan was taken off the bench and started uh, his first game against Syracuse. All he had to do was win that game. And BC was going to make a BCS bowl game for the first time in program history. And a local Syracuse guy, Diamond Ferry, who I don't feel like did anything else that season, absolutely crushed BC. He must have had like 400 all purpose yards in that game and just ran up and down. Diamond Ferry? Uh, Diamond Ferry. F E R R I. Diamond um, Ferry Syracuse. Yep. Uh, if your older B, your older Syracuse fans are going to know about it. And they will uh, definitely know them. And my older BC fans are, are projectile vomiting right now. So this so. was in 2004, I'm going to assume, correct? Yep. Yep. Season finale. Okay. We're, we're pulling up these stats right now. Um, forgive me. Yep. Uh, yeah. Maybe. He had done nothing in his entire <laughs> career. And then had local 28 kid. carries for 141 and two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And if I'm reading this right, he also had an interception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he did, he did that. <laughs> so he was a running back and a defensive back. Mm-hmm. He did everything. Wow. Uh, and he, he was from Massachusetts, so it was great. Uh, so anyways, side tangent there. <laughs> Let's talk about predictions for this game. You want to go first, Jackson? Sure. Um. So last week was the very first time on the Locked On Syracuse podcast that I just so happened to pick against Syracuse. It ended up going pretty well. I kind of find it weird. Uh, the point spread in this game, I believe, is actually in favor of Boston College. It's no matter. It's depending on the very interesting. It's like a FanDuel has, has a point and a half right now for Boston College. Yep. I think Syracuse is going to win outright. I think they I think they can obviously they can win in Boston College. It's not like the most intimidating environments of the world. I think they got off the schneid in the second half against Virginia tech, at least for the offense that is. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think they'll win this one. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be close, but I got Syracuse uh, 31, 24. Sounds about right. Yeah. I'm going to also go with Syracuse in this one. I, um, 
I'm waiting for this offense to figure out what it's doing. Um, because there's a talent there. I've watched it. There's not, and there's times where they look great, but there's, a, as Bill keeps saying, they're not, they're not consistent enough in the execution and the play calling. So you're playing a team this, and you're, when you're playing a team like Syracuse, just like when BC plays Louisville a couple of weeks ago, you're playing a team that can score. You have a team that can put up points quick. You have to be able to score. And BC has not shown that they consistently can do that enough for me to feel confident. Now, could they go out there um, and, and make a few, you know, make Kyle McCord make a few mistakes and, and take advantage of that? Absolutely. Remember, this team's off a of bye week, too. So BC was off last week. So they, they've been able to, to rest their, you know, that could be why the point spreads way it is, too, is Vegas well, always. Syracuse looks, doesn't normally do well when they have a bye week. Uh, maybe Boston <laughs> Vegas, look, Vegas looks at it like for that. I, I don't know. Yep. But uh, yeah, uh, but I, you know, especially without turbo, I, he's got, he's when he's healthy, he's going to be the focal point of that offense more than Tommy, I think. And they're missing Cam Arnold, who may or may not play their starting middle linebacker. Who's been their middle linebacker for about 20 years. It feels like the, he may not play either. They bill said they're both day to day. I, I love when coaches say that because who the hell knows what that means. Um, but if they're both out, that's that's big because Cam's going to have to be. You need a good middle linebacker to to kind of take away the middle for um, against Syracuse. Get Owen McGowan, who scored a touchdown last year as a fullback for BC. Uh, he's the starting he's the starting middle linebacker now. Uh, he's had some moments, but he's not Cam Arnold. He's just not. So I think, as you said, 31, 20, 31 24 sounds good. I'm going to go with like 35, 24 or something like so that. So you have it a little bit more in Syracuse's favor. You don't think it is. Do you, when do you think it gets out of hand for Boston college in that case? Um, I could see Syracuse jumping quick and then BC kind of claw on their way back. It's kind ah, of been there. A thing. Okay. And then maybe Syracuse scores a touchdown to, make, to like put it away late. You know, I think uh, it's going to be fourth quarter. This is going to be like a three point game. And then at some point Syracuse is going to do something that's, it's going to ice the game effectively. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that Boston College is going to have the ball late in the game, but they're going to be down two possessions. Yep. And they're probably going to score and you're going to need an onside kick to get the ball back. Yep. And I can, I can envision that. I can totally envision. And, and the thing that you mentioned about Alumni Stadium, like the fans have probably already cleared out because <laughs> by halftime, it's like maybe like 20 points or whatever. NBC starts clawing back, but it's usually in front of a lot of aluminum benches. I didn't mean so. to insult Boston college, by the way. I, I just, just, I just I say just saying in terms of overall environments, this is not the hardest place in this country to play. Okay. We're not it's going a, into death Valley here. <laughs> it's, it's a weird situation there though, because the quietness at times, and I gotta be, I gotta be honest, like the start, as you mentioned, the start of the season, the place was packed. Um, the Michigan state game, they were sold out. They've sold out and that was pouring. They've done a good job with that, but now, <laughs> with four straight, uh, three straight losses, the fans are starting to get grumbly again. So, you know, they're fickle. That's what, you know, sports fans are fickle. So I'm sure they'll be there for this game, but uh, how loud they'll be, I think, is another question. All right, Jackson, we've we've gone a little late. So that's all oh, good. It's all good. We, we had a fun time talking BC Syracuse. And I don't want to talk BC Syracuse basketball this year because I don't really want to talk about BC basketball, period, if I don't have to. <laughs> It's okay because um, right now we're not looking too hot either. We just beat Lemoyne by a couple points. I saw that. I saw that. So I felt good about that. Thank BC goodness at least we won. Oh my <laughs> goodness! At least we won. I was like, th you were down for a bit. I saw, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's bad enough that you you won by only four points against Lemoyne. Yep. But if you had lost, your season could be like over. Like you can right. recover. You can recover. All you got to do in a couple games is beat Texas. Right. Beat Texas on a neutral site. Then you're fine. But it's a loss that you'd never hear the end of. Yeah, you know? but you, you just can't lose to LeMoyne unless you're going to win like 29 straight after. Can't right. do it. Right. Yeah, BC was against the Citadel, so it was kind of similar, right? Like their uh, Ken Palm rating was like 380 or something like that. The Cit oh, and it was only 69.60. Oof. Yeah. If, yeah, BC was up by like 15 at one point. They just, I mean... Their basketball team right now, I watched like all their, their star players from last year. And BC was decent. I mean, they were NIT last year. Like all of them left. Like all the top seven scorers left. And they, I don't think they got enough guys in the portal to, to deal with that. Like you lose Quentin Post and Jaden Zachary and that's it. Yep. So anyways, we've talked a lot. We've said it all. Jackson, where can people find you? 
Locked on Syracuse at LO underscore Syracuse on Twitter. You can also find my personal Twitter at Jackson underscore H52. So be sure to check me out there. And I'm AJ Black. I'm the host of Locked on Boston College. You can find me wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Also, I'm the host of Lock. I say this wrong. The Locked on Boston postcast. So on Saturday after the game, depending on what happens, if, if BC gets throttled, I probably won't go to the press conference just because Bill will probably be mad. And nothing's going to come out of that. Um, he, yeah, it, my, my listeners know he yelled at me the other day. So he um, yelled at you? What did yeah, you got, I, I, What did you I, ask him? I asked him about – they were down two scores against Virginia Tech okay. in the fourth quarter. It was fourth and something, and I didn't write down the yardage down. And he went for a field goal down 14 with eight minutes left in the game. And I said, I was thinking to myself, no, no. why? <laughs> like Usually, I mean, if it was like fourth and 15, I mean, you got to kick it. It was, but... that's where I screwed up because it was fourth and 13. And I said fourth and sixth. And he got self-effacing and grumpy. And it was like, I screwed up, blah, blah, blah. But then I listened to him with his, um, our local radio show podcast and they was he was ripping me he wasn't saying my name but he's like yeah some guy asked me this blah 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 blah, blah. And he goes, get the damn yardage right i'm like i didn't know you were gonna ask me <laughs> like i i should have i learned my lesson there but that's all good we make mistakes yeah but anyways I, I will be going live after the game from the press box so syracuse fans if you want to check it out I'm, i promise you i'm not a honk i talk about everything that bc does well i talk about what goes wrong You'll hear everything about that. Locked on Boston Postcast, and I'm on Eagle Insider, part of 247 Network. If you want to get your BC news over there, come check me out. All right. Thank you, Jackson, for coming on, and we'll see you all again soon for another episode of Locked on Boston College, Locked on Syracuse, your team every day.